Hey, welcome to Oregon Basketball. This pur purpose of this video is for grades first through sixth grade at a youth level. Probably more inexperienced, but a lot of these drills can be used all the way up through eighth grade. Things that you're going to see basically go from passing, footwork, to three on zero for three on three type situations to five on zero. Then you also see the three on three defensive skills. This is meant to change up practices in the sense of every five minutes you should be changing up your drills. In those drills, depending on your level of play, you want to mix it up so when, if you have a one hour practice session, these are the things you can do in a one, one day a week schedule. Look forward to working with you. Let's get to work. Jump, stop, and pivot. A series where you can have inside pivots, reverse pivots, front pivots. The big thing is to have good balance and get your hands ready for the, for the pass or pass the bake connection. Then incorporate a dribble. The pivot front pivot or a reverse pivot. Chin the ball and deliver a solid bounce pass or chest pass back to your partner. Again, make sure they're alternating hands. I would advise that you use the weak hand more than the strong. More reps. Reverse pivot is the most important pivot. Kids tend to want to front pivot all the time. Reverse pivot is more of a game situation. Again, emphasize the weak hand more reps than the strong hand. Good jump stop, balance, deliver the pass. Fingers go out, thumbs go down. Stationary ball handling. Your imagination allows you to go as far as you want, but two ball, go up to about eight, eight reps or eight bounces. Try to get their eyes up, but in the beginning, it's okay to have their head down. But stationary, simultaneous. Now alternate, or what we call piston, but again, you can mix it up, but again, keep it to a limited number of dribbles. Two ball movement, again, this is simultaneous, then we'll go alternate or piston, then we'll go stop and go again, go about 20 feet, keep it in partner fashion so there's more engagement, less time to uh, look around and not pay attention. Again, piston or alternate, Again, the intensity of dribble, it's okay to look down in the beginning, but as they go up, eyes up, strong hands, quick feet. Stop and go, again, change of pace. It's not always how fast you go, it's how you change the speeds and how you control the dribble. At the first through fifth grade level, two trips is playing down and back. As they get better, maybe four trips. Stop, cross, and push. After you make the dribble move, accelerate. Try to get faster after you make the dribble move halfway out. Partner pass, just an efficient way of getting in some solid passing, using ball fakes, bounce passes, chest passes. Again, the idea is ball fake, then step around the defender, the imaginary defender. They're not going to be able to pass also directly all the time. So ball fake, shot fake, step around with the outside foot. Again, add a little more game action. This is what should happen after a couple weeks or about three or four practices. You add some pressure where they have to pivot, ball fake, and they can handle and deliver a good pass. Again, the give and go series is about what to do once you make a pass. Make a hard basket cut or rim cut, and the passer's got to see the cutter to the rim. Can't be putting it on the floor until they see the cutter to the rim. And after the guy passes it to the cutter, we call it a Laker cut. You make another cut to the rim, and the coach delivers a ball so both players get a shot. Again, hard rim cut. Then make a hard Laker cut after delivering the ball to the post. It doesn't matter what offense, this is just fundamental basketball. Again, spacing is triple threat cut through. You actually see the cutter, you actually see the basket, you just don't turn and go. We throw in another ball so everybody pretty much gets a shot so kids stay more engaged but at the same time they make a good pass, they see the cutter and they get rewarded for making those things happen. Anytime the ball is dribbled to the wing or dribbled to the baseline, the opposite side should drift to the baseline as well. 
Doesn't matter what level, three on three shell drill. Learning how to jump to the ball and have the ball side hand up. My hand closest to the man that passed it. Jump to the ball, get to the rim line, and get your fingertips. If you're one pass away, get your fingertips in the passing lane. If two passes away, you should be on the rim line, right in front of the rim so you can help him recover. Front the cutter, never let a guy front you, never let a guy blind cut you or get behind you. Jump to the ball so you front the cut. Again, coaches control the drill so you get proper spacing offensively, but also proper movement defensively. All levels should be doing this. Again, don't stay in the drill too long. Keep it to about 8 to 10, 12 seconds maybe. Rotate offense to defense, defense out. Zigzag, just a one-on-one, -on -one. keep a cushion, square up, drop step, cut the guy off, 45 degree angles, go halfway, and then get a dead, dead, dead at the half court level, learning how to close him out when the uh, offensive player picks the ball up. Again, keep a cushion, nose into their rib cage. Don't let the defender come up high, stay low, stay athletic, and get the nose into the rib cage of the, of the offensive player. And get a good dead at the end of mirror, mirror the ball with your hands. Again, this can be done at any position, but dribble lat is basically when the ball handler dribbles directly at any player. That player automatically goes back to it. That is in any fundamental offense. When a person dribbles at you directly, that is the read and react of you have to go back door whether you get the ball or not. You're creating a driving lane, also you're creating a possible back door cut. The dribbler is directly dribbling at his teammate. If he was dribbling into the paint, penetrating, it would be a drive and a drift. They're automatic in any offense. When a guy goes baseline, the opposite wing should sink to the opposite baseline because you have that baseline pass. Now the dribbler must make an effort to get into the lane, otherwise the defense doesn't have to rotate. Drive and drift, wing to wing. Again, passing or dribbling, but when you make a pass to the wing and somebody goes baseline, what's the natural re natural reaction? A bump behind. And again, if a guy goes baseline, you gotta fill behind, clock behind, or bump behind. Nice reverse pivot. The dribbler's gotta get in the paint to make the defense react, and then at an inside pivot, not it, so they're turning, they're, they're sealing their, their player off. Make a nice bump behind for a shot, or possibly another penetration. Again, it doesn't matter what offense, this was, should be the reaction regardless of when somebody dribbles away from you, you get a bump behind. Again, three on three for especially teams and leagues that play three on three, this is simple basketball. See the cutter, run three or four cuts, and then deliver the ball. But again, spacing is key. Second is to see the cutter, and three is to eventually get the ball in triple threat so you can make a good decision. Here's an entry of, on three on three where you have a baseline screen and then the guy that set the baseline screen sets an up screen. And you can might get an easy look, but the idea is to teach kids that you get a screen, you get another screen, and then you balance the offense right into your three on three basketball. In all cutters, before we put the ball on the floor, you must see the cutter to the rim. Again, as your players get better, you got to get them not to run the play, but run the play after the play. And that is, when something does, when you can't get a score off an initial cut, what do you do to balance the floor like this is showing? Rip and sweep at this age, or any age, students and players tend to keep the ball on the same side they catch up. They have to learn and rip it through below their knees and beat the defense shoulder to shoulder. You could put a chair there, a cone there, another a player and coach there, but they got to rip it through and then step by tight and not belly out, not lone ranger it out. Again, tight angles. Rip it and see what's on the other side to score. And you can use this at any angle on the floor.
a traditional drill, but it keeps them engaged. It creates, especially in the beginning of practice, follow your pass drill. You mix up the passes from bounce, the chest, the overhead, especially the ones eventually with ball fake and step around the defender. Again, it keeps everybody engaged. If you have tight space, you can get a lot done in a short period of time. Partner pass. And keep your drills to about anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds. Move on to the next pass or next different style. Or if there's three on three, offensive defense, do offensive. Again, just another rip and sweep through. Because a lot of teams play five out, two corners, two wings and a point. Catch the ball and teaching the player to rip and see the bucket and go opposite. Too many keep the ball on the same side they catch it, which gives them very few opportunities to score or see a score. Rip the ball below your kneecap, sweep it through. Again, on rip throughs and sweeps, the key thing is to go straight angles. 45 degree angles, tight angles, you can put a player there, a chair there, so they're not bellying out. And if you do bow out, defenses don't get beat. That gives be tight, shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip. Stay low and athletic. Again, at a, at a K through sixth grade level, especially three through sixth grade, five out is ideal because you're teaching how to play natural basketball. See the cutter to the rim, make a hard rim cut, no tippy toe cuts. Better to make an aggressive mistake. Get a couple turns of the ball and get a score. Don't spend too long. And then go to the next group. Stationary balling, especially at the youth level, because their hands are not strong and their eye hand coordination is lacking. Mix it up. It goes old traditional, but it works. Again, around the legs, around the knees, around the world. You be the dictator of what you want done, but it, again, keep it to about 30 seconds, then next person in. As you can see, most of the drills have only two people in line. It keeps them more in focus and more engaged. of our OIBL first through sixth grade session, things that can be used in a one hour session, keeping them engaged, keeping them excited. If you got any other questions, you can email me, jjn at oregonsd.net. Coach Nadelka, look forward to all your questions. I think you'll find all these clips very helpful. And the other thing is, you can find it on our app, on our app for a buck ninety-nine. Thanks a lot. Go get them.